Welcome to our devotional study today. We are in the last of a number of days of studying the church of Thyatira. We saw in verse 19 of Revelation 2 that Jesus commends the service of this church by commending their ministries and he commended their motives as well as their maturity. And then as we moved into verses 20 through 23, we see that Jesus confronts the sin in the church by confronting a teacher in this church that had the spirit of Jezebel. And uh, he also confronted the tolerance of the church and the testimony of the church or the lack thereof. And he reminds them, as 1 Peter 4, 17 says, that judgment must begin at the house of God. And when we're slacking judgment at the house of God, uh, we realize that uh, we certainly are not fulfilling the obligation that God has given to us in order to maintain purity in our churches. Now, as we come into verses 24 through 29, we see that he comforts the saints in the church that are standing true to the word of God. So let's read these verses on the church of Thyatira, and then we'll look into the conclusion of them today. So in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 18, it says, Unto the angel of the church in Thyatira, Right, these things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach, and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which ye have, hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my words unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So here in verses 24 through 29, we see that Jesus comforts the saints in the church. And we see here, in, in spite of what we saw by what Jesus had to confront here in what was wrong with the church at Thyatira, we see very clearly in these last five verses that not everyone in Thyatira had walked away from the Lord. Even in that tolerant, compromising, sinful church, there was a, there was a uh, faithful remnant, and God speaks to them in the end of this passage. The Lord has a few words of hope and comfort for them as they struggle to walk holy in the midst of a not only an unholy world, but sadly in the midst of an unholy church. There were those who stood firm on the word of God, and he comforts them concerning their duty in verses 24 and 25 when he says, But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none, none other burden, but that which ye have, hold that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. He reminds them of the importance of holding fast. In Titus chapter 1 and verse 9, it says that we are to hold fast the faithful word. Jesus tells them that all he expects from them is that they stay the course, that they continue to be faithful for him until he calls them home. He wants them to avoid being sucked into the vortex of evil that is swirling there in Thyatira and has gobbled up so many, even some of whom were members of that church. And friends, that's what his will is for us as well in these confusing days. He wants us to stay the course for the glory of God. And friend, let me encourage you today. You may have people around you that are taking a new path, but that does not mean that you have to. You can stand the ground and you can be faithful unto death or until the rapture calls us home. I'm reminded in Ephesians chapter 6, we see there, of course, the, ar the Christian armor. And in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11 through 18, it says, Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. 
For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We are told three times in those verses of the importance of standing for the Lord. And may we stand in these days that we live in. So he comforts them concerning their duty, but he also comforts them concerning their destiny in verses 26 and 27. He that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father." The Lord promises them here that if they remain faithful to him, that they will rule with him when he comes in his kingdom. It's almost like he's saying to these people, you folks are powerless to change your situation now, but the day is coming when I will put my power into your hands. You will reign with me and your struggle for holiness will be worth it all in the end. Friend, let me remind you today, if you are going to be a holy, godly Christian in these days, you may as well get ready to be hated and misunderstood and persecuted. But friends, this is not the end of the matter. One day, our king is coming, and when he does, he is going to let his faithful servants reign with him. Oh, we may be weak today in the eyes of the world. The worldly compromising churches might be the ones with all the people and all the power and all the prestige. But when the king comes, those who have served him faithfully now will reign with him then. And it will be worth it all on that day when he comes. Then we see that he comes with them. He comforts them concerning deliverance in verse 28. He says, I will give him the morning star. Jesus promises these faithful believers a morning star. There's been much debate among biblical scholars exactly what he is talking about here. Some believe that he is promising himself. After all, the scripture says that he is the bright and morning star in Revelation 22 and verse 16. And what a comfort to know that we not only have the Lord Jesus Christ here, but that we also have him for eternity. But yet we see also that I believe that he's talking here about the rapture. You see, when the night grows the darkest, the morning star or the planet Venus becomes visible. And when that heavenly bodily appears, you know that daybreak is not far behind. I believe that Jesus here is telling these folks to get a hold, to hold on just a little while longer. He may be, he's saying it might seem mighty dark right now, but there is a glimmer of hope in the heavens. Hang on, I'm coming to get you. And friends, that is the promise that he has for us as well. This dark night that we are in right now will not last forever. Jesus Christ is coming again. The signs are visible all around us. And symbolically, the morning star has appeared and it signals the approach of a new day. He is coming and we are going. So let me encourage you, dear child of God, hang on a little longer. As we bring this study to the, of the Church of Fire Attire to a conclusion, I hope that you can honestly say that the church that you are a part of is nothing like that church in Thyatira. However, I do think that Satan would love for nothing better than to slither his way into our churches and cause us to abandon the Lord's truth. Let me encourage you, friends, in these days that we live in to be vigilant. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 7, be sober, be vigilant, because our adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom we may he may devour. Friends, we must walk and work against his tactics at every turn. We must look not only at our churches, but we must look at ourselves and our own individual hearts and make sure that we are not allowing compromising as day and age to slither into our lives. Is it not true that sin comes not in great numbers, but it comes when we as individual believers allow Satan a stronghold in our lives. So as we've looked at this, has the Lord touched your heart? Has he challenged and encouraged you? If he has, I encourage you at this time, come before him. 
Deal with any sin that he has talked to you about, that he has spoken to you about. Deal with any compromises that you may be allowing into your life and ask him to help you stand the course and be strong for the glory of God. If he has impressed you through this to once again pray for your churches and other churches that are holding out against the tide of compromise, I encourage you to make time today to do that, to stop and to praise him for helping you guys, but at the same time to say, Lord, help us to be faithful until the day that you called call us home. Friends, that ought to be our desire as we look at this church of Thyatira. Have a great day. <laughs>